Uh, Ronnie Cowan. <coughs> if it is Speaker, and I shall start with a confession. This speech may be familiar to anyone who heard my budget speech last year, because it is pretty much the same one. And the reason for that is that despite a year passing, the UK Government is no further forward. Another budget, another red book. And I note that this year, under the title of Agriculture 4.24 of the Red Book, the Government touches on drainage boards and the investment in water and flood management. I plead with them, manage it as nature would. Trap the water in the hills, <coughs> promote capture and slow release, encourage and support councils to plant green areas in the appropriate places. Don't think we can concrete our way through this problem. In my constituency of Inverclyde, with the help of Clyde Muirshield Park, local farmers and the Yernstein project, we are re-establishing peatland, which will reduce flooding, create an environment for nature to flourish and be accessible for people to walk and cycle. Yeah, yeah. And this has been done by helping nature do what it does best and undoing the damage that was caused by draining the land for grouse shooting all those years ago. <laughs> and under the heading of Greenland Industries 4.51 of the Red Book, the government is throwing some sizable chunks of money at lowering carbon emissions. But there are two errors in this rather small section of the book. First, it mentions nuclear as a critical part of the plan to decarbonise power. It is worth noting that building size we will see will create 6.24 million tonnes of carbon equivalent CO2. That is one hell of a price to pay for a build that is not needed. Yeah, Secondly, yeah. if we want to decarbonise our energy sector, and we want to stimulate agriculture, and we want to reduce plastic waste, and we want to reduce landfill, and we want to improve our environment and increase agricultural yield, then why is there absolutely no mention whatsoever of hemp? This is where my speech starts to sound familiar, but I was told very early on in my time here that there is nothing wrong with repetition. I want this government to help an industry that employs local people, could generate huge profits, pay their tax to the Exchequer and help offset the environmental damage they were doing to our precious planet. That industry would be a win-win-win scenario. What better way to grow an economy and help the local community if not by creating jobs so people have a disposable income to spend locally and benefit the local community and all associated supply chains? Hemp the evidence has been available for centuries, and indeed it was promoted and even enforced by King Henry VIII in the 16th century. Back then, a quarter of all arable land was dedicated to growing hemp. But there are still people that walk amongst us that hear and fear recreational cannabis when saying hemp. This is born out of ignorance, and the most recent example has to be when the UK Home Office took actions to stop the export of products to the UK from the Jersey-based firm Jersey Hemp. Jersey Hemp have worked for three years to ensure they meet every UK government compliance, and the UK government went behind their back to the Jersey authorities to stop Jersey Hemp operating. After months of legal action in the UK court, the Home Office has finally admitted that it acted unlawfully in relation to Jersey Hemp. I am limited in what I can say, but no amount of compensation will help Jersey Hemp, which has been wiped out by the actions of the UK Government. And I only mention this case because it is symptomatic of the lack of vision of the UK Government and lack of understanding when it comes to the hemp plant. When it was encouraged in the 16th century, that was to manufacture rope and canvas for the King's Navy. But now we can make clothing, shoes, biodegradable plastic, insulation panels, food, paper and biofuels. Currently, the government is spending billions retrofitting homes through the Eco4 and Eco Plus scheme, but they are using products made from petrochemicals, and these release harmful volatile organic compounds or VOC emissions into the air of the buildings. Why not allow local farmers to grow hemp and supply the local contractors with carbon negative natural fibre alternatives at scale? What would be a better use of public money? In fact, there are 50,000 known uses for the hemp plant. Finding markets for them would not be a problem. Growing it is. It will sell, it will be profitable, and the government could reap the benefit. However, because of the inflexibility of the proceeds of Crime Act, companies can have their bank accounts seized and assets frozen. The fear is stopping investment. The ignorance has permeated the stock exchange, and as a result, they have been dismissive of approaches from the business sector and myself. 
The government should be leading the charge, not cowering in the corner. The government should be promoting the fact that hemp absorbs 22 tonnes per hectare of atmospheric carbon during its four-month growing cycle. Hemp produces four times the biomass of the same sized area of forest, making it far more sustainable source of material. Hemp doesn't need pesticides, insecticides or fertiliser to grow in the UK. Hemp has a natural antimicrobial properties, so it passively cleans the air in buildings. Hemp has a high capacity for moisture absor absorption, allowing for a controlled atmosphere within buildings. Hemp construction materials acts as a long-term carbon sink. One £60 million investment would create a facility that is capable of growing 32,000 acres per year. That would sequester over 207,000 tonnes of CO2 per annum. That's the CO2 photosynthesised by the hemp in its four-month growth. That doesn't include the carbon sequestered into the soil or the net effect of replacing high-embodied carbon products from international supply chains and their emissions. And as a bonus for the farmers, hemp regenerates the soil it grows in so it would work well in crop rotation. It increases winter heat, wheat and spring barley used by 16 to 18 per cent when they follow hemp in rotation, and it cleans groundwater. And the barrier to this industry raising the funding it requires is licensing. To make this industry a success, the government only has to open its mind to the reality of what hemp is and distribute licenses appropriately. The industry will take care of the rest. Hemp is not a plant for the past, it is a plant that can pave the way to a cleaner, greener future, and its benefits are clear for all to see if we are prepared to open our eyes and hear the possibilities. And if it raises taxes, if that's what it takes, if that's the trigger required, then so be it. But don't wait too long. It's a year since I made a similar speech, and at that time other countries are pressing ahead where we are left behind in our nuclear bunkers. Yeah. 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 Uh,